to see that you had to stay home. If you got too much money, you, you left town. You, but you didn't have enough money to leave town, so you stayed home and came to church. And I know most of y'all are very prosperous. Y'all could have left town and went anywhere you wanted to, even Paris, France, if you wanted to. But anyway, I got a couple of uh, thank you cards this morning that I want to read to you. Remember a while back, we sent some money out to the Midwest to help out with the flooding? And through Brother Ricky Fields and his ministry. And I got a card back from his pastor. He said, please extend to your church our deepest expressions of gratitude for the generosity they displayed uh, to greater than, greater than outreach. That's the name of the ministry that was working out there. Thank you to my brother in Christ for leading your people to, in the pathway of generosity and sacrifice. Your gift has not only met physical needs, but it has supplied encouragement to weary soldiers, to weary soldiers of the cross. My prayer is that our Heavenly Father will bless you and all, bless you all a hundredfold. And that's from Pastor Grinstead over at Greater Heights Baptist Church. Uh, and then I have a nice thank you card from Deanna. She says, Galilee, thank you so much for supporting me during this special time in my life. This church has been there for me since the day I was born. And I'm so incredibly blessed to have such a wonderful church there. Deanna, that's, she's part of the nurses, but that's a very nice card. And I appreciate you. I appreciate it when anybody's thankful, don't you? Yeah. Um, in fact, I'm one of those fellas that I do something for you and you don't thank me for it, then I won't do anything else for you. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to say thank you. And I try to remember to say thank you as well, but that's the way I am, I guess. But it's good to see you this morning. How great he is. How wonderful he is. Amen. Y'all pray for me that he'll touch my hip. By my hip is out of joint. I'm in pain. You see me grimace, you'll know why. I went to one chiropractor. He fixed it. Went back the next day for the second follow up. He broke it. <laughs> went, went the third day and tried to get it put back in, and they, they didn't, get it, didn't, get, didn't, didn't get it right. So I'm going over there on Tuesday, and I'm going to demand they get it right or give me my money back. <laughs> Good luck on that, right? <laughs> Good luck on getting that money back. Anyway, let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' lovely name we pray. You bless us today. Lord, we invite you to come and be in our midst, sing with us, worship with us. Help us, Lord, to turn to you and all of our uh, needs this morning. I'm sure there's folks here who have got needs in their home and in their families and their job. I pray that you meet those needs for them. Help them, Lord, if they need a word of assurance from you, that they would find it here. If they need something, Lord, to encourage them, keep them moving ahead and going ahead for you, I pray they'd find it here. I pray that in this service today, Lord, you would definitely speak to every heart. So that when people leave this building today, they will know that they've been in church. Amen. And they've, been, they've heard from God. Please speak to us today through the singing, the testifying, Lord, through the preaching. Have your way because, Lord, you're worthy to have all we've got and all we can give. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings and saving us. Now save those among us that are unsaved today. Encourage us this, this morning to go forward for you and be Equipped, Lord, well equipped to face this whole world in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, all right, well, it's good to be here this morning. A couple of announcements for you, and then uh, we'll move on with the rest of the service. The camp meeting, 24th annual GPA camp meeting, coming up in just a couple weeks, the 9th through the 13th of June. So Michael Moore will be here with us that Sunday. And then, of course, the rest of the services go Monday evening through Thursday evening and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning. There's a schedule and some information about it in your bulletin, the times and services, the morning devotions, and all those things. So follow the schedules. If you can help out in anything, uh, we do have, I don't know if they're in the, the bulletin still, but I know there's a stack back there. They are still in the bulletin. Okay. And if you didn't get one of the sign-up sheets in the bulletin, there is some back there on the table in the foyer. If you would like to volunteer for anything on there, just go through and find something you can do. Sign up and get that to the office as soon as you can. I don't know what the deadline is for the sign-ups. Is it Last this week? Saturday. This Saturday? The the Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so last day is June 8th. <laughs> so anything that you can do to help, if you can sign up on, on any line anywhere in the, in the form, or if you're not sure what you can do to help, just tell the, the office. We'll make sure that we get you somewhere. And we welcome all the help that we can get. And we thank you. Every year, the church works so hard to put this together and have it run smoothly. So I want to thank you for all the work that you do for this. So if you can help, please do sign up. This Wednesday night is the last Wednesday night of the school year. 
for the Masters Clubs and the Teen Bible Study. Wednesday Night Bible Study. It'll be at 7.15, just like all the rest of them. Then we'll take our break for the summer, and I believe we're picking back up sometime mid-August uh, for that when school starts back. But uh, this is going to be a big night, this Wednesday night. And I want to I brag a little bit on my teenagers. Um, this school year, we did something different. Uh, we've had several teens get saved this past school year. In the last two years, we've had, I think, six or eight total in the last couple of years. I haven't kept very good track of that. But we had several get saved this school year, specifically. But we ran a competition this school year. Um, we gave people points for showing up, points for saying Bible verses, for bringing visitors. If they came to Sunday school, Wednesday night Bible study, they got points. And we tallied it up and figured out that if you could get to 320 total points by the end of the school year, over the summer, we're going to get to do a big free trip to Six Flags. Okay? And we have about 20 to 30 kids. If they all come at one time, we probably have close to 30. And we had, as of Wednesday night, we had five qualify with 320 points or more. One girl had 210 points, I think it was, and she had to say 11 verses to get to 320 points and go to Six Flags, and she had one night left to do it. And so with the, with the help of Hannah Williams, Mary and Nancy's daughter, she said 15 verses. Not only so that she could get to 320, but that so she could beat her older brother in the point stands. <laughs> and then Hannah Williams turned right back around and said enough points to get 750 total points on the school year. So we had some kids who worked really hard. They worked incredibly hard this past school year, and they all deserve this trip we're going to take. We need to set up a date for it sometime this summer to take them on the Six Flags. But a lot of them worked very, very hard this school year and did incredibly well. And uh, they, they brought visitors. We had visitors several times. We've had uh, a lot of kids start coming and, and repeating things and asking questions. There's been a lot of growth this past school year. I thank you for praying for them. For those of y'all that have been able to support in one way or another, we thank you for that. But they worked really, really hard. I want to say that I'm very proud of them and all the work that they did this past year. Any other announcements? So check out your bulletin. There's announcements in there about the Bible Club and everything coming up later in June. So grab a bulletin. If you don't have one, they're on the back, on the back table there. Ask one of the ushers. And make sure you check out the rest of the announcements. Okay. Titus chapter number 3 verse 4 says The kindness and love of God appeared The song says Heaven came down and glory filled my soul Hymn number 215 Oh what a wonderful, wonderful day Everything now and glory fade. 
to receive our offering, and we will say this, just as <coughs> men are coming forward to receive the offering. We have a refrigerator that we are auctioning off by a silent bid. And if you want to have a, put in a bid on the refrigerator, put it in an envelope, put your name on it, and how much you were willing to give for it, and uh, put it in an envelope now until the offering time, and we'll open them up later and see who's got the highest bid, and you can take it home with you in your back pocket. <laughs> no, it's a full-size refrigerator. It does not have an ice maker, but it's a very nice refrigerator. It's made by Whirlpool. It's a basic refrigerator, but it's made by Whirlpool. It's a good refrigerator. And if you want to bid on it, then you have the opportunity to do that now. Bids will close at the end, at the end of this offering. <laughs> and whoever gets it, gets it. And for so whatever amount you ask, you, you get the highest bid. So that, when y'all get out there, y'all open, um, open up the, um, the envelopes and say refrigerator on it. Put refrigerator on it. Open up the refrigerator envelopes. Bring me the results, okay? See who's, who's, see who's got it, okay? If nobody bid on it, then I guess we're going to beg somebody to take it. <laughs> I'm, sure we'll get, I'm sure we'll get one or two dollars bid on it. I remember one time we was bidding on some buses down in, down in Cobb County uh, for Shallow Hills Baptist Church. And they had some buses that they were uh, doing this way, private, private bids, you know. And uh, there was two of them there that we wanted. And so I, I said, let's put in a bid of $311. Well, we got both of them, $311 each. I don't know, don't know to this day if I spent too much money or not. <laughs> but I did take one of those buses later, in, later on when I left Georgia and went to Kentucky to start a church. Shiloh gave me that bus. And we drove it 360 miles to Lexington, Kentucky at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> See, like that anyway, going up those mountains, up the Cumberland Mountain. But we got it there and it was a long, hard day, but we got it there. But we drove that, ran that bus all over Lexington and picked up dozens and dozens and dozens of kids over the years and saw bunches and bunches of them get saved. So that bus really did bring in a lot of blessings. So maybe this refrigerator will do the same for you. <laughs> Bailey, would you give thanks? Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for giving us this day. And I thank you, Lord, for each and every one here today. I do pray, Father, that you bless the ones that couldn't make it today. I pray you be with them mm -hmm. as they travel. And I pray, Father, that you bless this offering. Use it for your honor and your glory. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 sacrifice 
And now continue, please. We pray to bless our country as we sing Bear to the Beautiful. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hymn number 438. Hymn number 438.
this morning, please, and turn to Luke 22, chapter 22. And I realize it's getting a little bit late in time, and that's probably that's my fault, but uh, be sure I won't keep you here too long today. Everybody likes a short preacher, I know that. <laughs> you don't find many shorter than me, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, but we gotta go. Yeah, amen. amen. Chapter number 22, I won't take time to read all that I had planned, but Jesus is approaching the last few days before he's going to die. He goes to Jerusalem for the preparation of the Passover week, and he has his, uh, some of his disciples to go and find the guest chamber of a, a wealthy man. To, he and his disciples might have the Passover meal there. And Jesus says this, he said, uh, I, I, with desire, or for a long time, I've been looking forward to eating this meal with you, for I'll tell you something, it's not, I will not eat with you again, until we sit down together in the kingdom of God and eat together then. He said, I'll not partake of it until then. Of course, we as a church recognize it, and we do it regularly here. But he took the bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. It says in verse number 19, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. That's, about what, that's, that's what's about to happen that he's, when he's crucified. It's broken for you, he said. This do in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, verse 20 saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And so there's serenity, and there's, there's, a, there's a sense of presence in that upper room that night. And then Jesus breaks the, the serenity by telling them that one of them is going to betray him. In verse number 21, he said, the, one, the hand of him that betrayeth me is here on the table with me. And he said, uh, the Son of Man, he said, he'll go where he's, uh, he said he'll, he'll, he goes where it was determined. He said, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. The serious thing to betray somebody, but it's even more serious thing to betray Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But he went on to say, he, he said this, and uh, he said, then there was a strife at the table. They, that passed by, and you know, the disciples began to inquire and say, who did that? Who's going to be? And they couldn't figure it out, so time just passes on to the next scene, and he says there was a strife there in that room because some of them wanted to know who's going to be the most important one in the kingdom of God. And they were arguing back and forth about who's going to have the biggest, you know, the biggest uh, position, the greatest position. Because they fully expected Jesus to go out there and defeat the Romans, expel them, and set up the kingdom out there. They thought they were going to be a part of that. And uh, Peter perhaps thought, well, he had as much right to it as anybody. He is the leader of the crowd. After all, he was the spiritual one among them. He was the one who recognized that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Peter's the one who always stepped up whenever anything was, you know, being questioned. He stepped up and got right in the middle of it. No doubt he had leadership ability. No doubt he was a strong and powerful influence. No doubt he was a wonderful personality. And so maybe he thought he was going to be the leader of this crowd, but they were arguing about it. And Jesus rebukes them about that, and he says, listen, the greatest among you, let him be as the youngest among you. Let him be as the weakest and the, and, and the, and the servant among you. If you're going to be my servant, you're going to have to get rid of yourself, get rid of your pride, get rid of your uh, self-importance, and serve me as if you were just a simple, young person with no ambitions, but just to serve me and satisfy the cause of Christ, work in the cause of Christ. Amen. And then out of the blue, and out of the blue, in verse number 31, Jesus predicts that Peter will deny him. Now stay with me, I'm getting to the point. I'm going to get to the point and then I'm going to preach the message. He said to Peter, he said, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He said, but I prayed for you. I've prayed for you that thy faith fell not, he says this. And he said, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both in the prison and to death. And he said, and he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt try thrice deny that thou knowest me. And so Peter steps up. He says, I'll be your leader. I'll show these fellas who can, who can take it. I'll stand up for you if I have to go to jail. I'll stand up for you even if, I, if it, even if it costs me my life. And the Lord just said to him, said, Peter, you don't really know what you're saying. The devil's already asked permission to tear your life apart. He's going to sift you as wheat. 
But I have prayed for you. I want you to take this word of assurance. When the troubles come, I want you to remember, I have prayed for you. And when you get converted, then you strengthen your brother. I pray that your faith will not fail you. And when you get strengthened, you and when you strengthen, you uh, get help, you strengthen your brother. What he said is, the devil has desired to have you. The devil wants you. Amen. The devil wants your child. Amen. The devil wants your family to work. Mm -hmm. The devil wants your home destroyed. Right, the devil wants your marriage defeated and busted and broken. Right. The devil wants that. He desires it. He said to Peter, he said, the devil has desired you. Satan has desired you. He wants to tear you apart. He wants to destroy you completely. He had overheard the things that Peter said. He had overheard the things that Jesus had just said to Peter. He knew that the Lord had a plan for Peter's life. And so that made Peter a prime target. Target number one. Eleven disciples that are going to be left. Peter, target number one. The man who espoused, the, who assumed himself to be a leader. The man who said, and, and, and the devil thought, well, if I can destroy Peter, I can ruin the whole rest of them in one blow. The devil wanted to destroy Peter. But the Lord said, I have prayed for you. My emphasis is more on, is on what Jesus said. I have prayed for you. Did you know Satan has done a very thorough job of sifting many people already today? In, this, in, this, in, in our day. He's taken the very spiritual life and energy out of people. People who used to serve the Lord have gone through a time of testing and sifting and now they just have no ambition, no desire. In other words, they failed the test. The passage does not stop there. Jesus says, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art strengthened, or, or when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now wait a minute. What does that mean? That means that Peter was going to be tested, but not only was Peter going to be tested, but all the others were going to be tested. And when Peter was, Peter was first in line, and when he would come to it, then down the road, others would be tested of his brethren, of the brethren, of the, of the members of the church. And he said, to them, he said to Peter, he said, they're going to need the help, some help from you. They're going to need to draw from your strength. They're going to need some help from your example. Peter, I pray for you that you'll stand true, that you won't fail, that you won't fall apart, that the devil won't beat you. And when you get to the place where you come through this thing, look around you. There's going to be somebody you can help. Somebody needs you to encourage them. Somebody will need you to be a blessing to their life. Somebody will need you to keep them from falling. To keep them from their life from cracking up, for, their, for, for things are falling apart in their homes and in their families. Peter's, Peter's endurance was not going to depend upon his strength, but it was going to depend on the Lord's prayer. He said, when thou art converted, he strengthen thy brothers. Now time doesn't permit me to follow this train of thought any further, but let me get back to the text. When Peter hears this, when he hears this, he must have been awfully embarrassed. How would you feel? If right there in front of everybody, the Lord said, Peter, the devil's after you. And uh, he's going to sit you as we. He's going to tear you up. He's going to make your life miserable. But I'm going to pray for you. Must have been awfully embarrassing for Peter to stand up there and say, and have to admit that he's going to have to help with God in his life. Yeah. Have to admit that he needs Christ. He needs the presence of the Lord in his life. Peter exposes. Or Jesus exposes Peter's human weakness. And in exposing Peter's human weakness, he exposes our human weakness. Right. Pride is one of our weaknesses. Yeah. Arrogant assumption is another one of our weaknesses. But no matter how determined we may be to carry on for the Lord, we must realize that this arm of flesh will fail us. We are not to rely upon our own strength alone. And only if you're a Christian can you understand what I'm about to say. There is a strength that God alone can give. In the hour of heartache, in the hour of crisis, in the hour of temptation, 
There is a strength that only God can give. I can I think think of the the, the, the morning my I was in Wales, a missionary there, and living in the Capitol House down in Cardiff. About five thirty in the morning, Wales time, about about, about uh, midnight over here. The phone rang very early, and I scrambled down the stairs to get it. I had one telephone. It was in it was back in the old days, you know, when Ma Bell was in the room over here. But had one telephone over in the window, and you had to climb over the couch to get to it. My brother told me that my mother had just died. There was something that flowed into my, my body. It, 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 it came on me like rain, like, like, like rain soaking into my shoulders and coming right straight to my heart. I had many times wondered, Lord, I'm 3,000 miles away. What's going to happen? What's it going to be like when my mother dies? And she was, I knew she was sick. And, and what's going to be like when my daddy dies? If I'm, if I'm over here, what's, how am I going to make it? But when he said that my, my mother just died of a heart attack, there was a blessing and strength that came over me that sustained me 3,000 miles away and brought me home for the funeral and stepped me beside my mother's casket and looked down on her face and thanked God that she was saved. Amen. You know what I'm saying this morning? The arm of flesh are fading, but if you're relying upon God in the hour of crisis, there'll be a strength for you. Amen. When we are put to the test, when our feet are put to the fire, we may fall apart. Let's just admit it. We may fall apart. We may fail to keep our commitments. But when we do, we can be assured that we can bounce back. Why? Because Jesus has prayed yeah. for us. Yeah. Three quick points and I'll be done. Consider the vision of our Lord's prayer for Peter. The vision of it. The, the vastness of it. The, the range of it. The scope of it. Jesus is never taken by surprise. Amen. Someone has said, and I agree, has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurs to God? Nothing ever just suddenly appears and God says, ah! Like we do. Nothing ever just suddenly appears and occurs to God. This is one of his divine attributes. He knows everything from the beginning to the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's all that's in between. When dear Betty Tripp over in Wales used to sing a song for us entitled, Oh, rejoice in the Lord. It had a line like this. It said, oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistakes. He knoweth the end of, each, of the path that I take. And when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. God's got a plan for your life, a pathway for you to walk. It's only when, no matter what the pressures are, no matter what the difficulties are, no matter what the situation is, it's when you get off of that path that you expose yourself to the devil. Amen. Right. You get off of God's path for your life. You're opening up your life for the devil to just step in and attack you. Make no mistake about it. He is a roaring lion. He's walking about seeking whom he may devour. But not only that, he's a sneaky snake. For it was in the form of a serpent that he lied and deceived Eve. And we find that the Bible says he's a liar and the father of lies. Amen. Amen. You can't believe a word he says. Amen. He mixes, tries to mix truth with falsehood and error. You can't believe the devil not for one half second. He thinks for a moment he's got you under his spell or under his under his uh, control. He'll wreck and ruin your life in a heartbeat. You know why? Because he don't like you. Amen. And you know why he don't like you? Because you are created in the image of God. Amen. When he sees you, he sees the image of God in you. He knows what you are. He knows what you've been. He knows what you have the potential to become. To, to become under the leadership and touch of the hand of God. He knows and he'd like to destroy that before it gets started in your life. Yep. I can't tell you how many times over the years, I can't even count the times over the years, of 40 years of ministry, that I that the devil has tried to have me and sift me as we. There have been so many times in my ministry that I felt the pressure of God, the pressure of the, uh, the oppression of the devil. And I can tell you some things that scare you, make your hair stand up on the back of your neck. Things I've encountered in my Christian experience. Spooky people. With spooky stories. Yep. A lady that I knew years ago and still know her, she's still alive. She, she was in America. I was in Wales. She called me up and said, there's a demon on me. I said, oh, you got me. There's no demon on me. You're a Christian. You know, you're okay. She said, I don't care. There is a demon on me. I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I want you to get there, sit there real quiet. 
And I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pray and then I'm gonna talk to him and I'm gonna see if he's there. I know y'all think I'm crazy now, don't you? I prayed in Jesus' name. I said, if, it, if there is a demon oppressing this, this woman, you speak to me now. Identify himself. He spoke. Rapid voice. I said, what are you doing? Torment this woman. Why are you doing this to her? He said, just for fun. Who would have come up with that answer but the devil? So I prayed again, and in Jesus' name, I commanded him to get going. She started talking. He's gone! He's gone! He's gone! I about fell out of the floor. <laughs> I couldn't stand up. He said, Preacher, did that really happen? It sure enough did. Justin knows what I'm talking about. But you know when it happened? After the devil had already torn her family apart. Mm. Wrecked her home and her marriage. Destroyed the family life that they had. Wrecked their ministry that they had. Wrecked it all. The devil tore up her life. Waited too late. To recognize this evil presence in her home. To get rid of it. You say, is that the only time you've had proper experiences? No, it's not. I don't mean to tell you, but I mean just make y'all spook. But the Lord knows everything. He knows the craftiness of the devil. He knows his devices. Amen. Jesus whispered words of prayer for Peter. He said, when you are, I pray for you that, you, that your faith won't fail. But when you're converted, you'll get back to work for me. Secondly, notice the value of the, prayer, the, Lord, the Lord's prayer for Peter. Could anyone's prayer be of more value than that of the Lord Jesus Christ? How could the Heavenly Father refuse His Son anything that He asked for? Yeah. I tell you that we value the Lord's intercession, don't we? Amen. He prayed for Peter. He prays for us. The prayer was of more value than stopping Satan in his vanities. It was of more value than anything else in Peter's life that he would experience. He would learn something about the devil, but he would also learn something about himself. But he'd also learn something about the Lord. And in John 17, the Bible says that the Lord has prayed for us. Ah, that feels good, doesn't it? Just let that soak down in your soul for a minute. He said, I pray for these that you've given me out of this world, but he said, not for these alone, but I pray for those that shall believe on me after, after, after this, after, according to the word. So what Jesus was looking down through the scope of time and he said, Lord, I pray for these disciples I've got right now. But let me just stop for a minute and say, Lord, Father, would you take care of my disciples down the road in generations to come? Hey, he's prayed for you. He's prayed for me. The scope, the value of it. The depth of it. What about the victory over it? When it's all over, Peter had failed. You know I ain't failed. He stands by the fire. But the enemy's fire. The young lady comes up to him and you know, says, You're one of his disciples. He said, No, I'm not. He cursed and swore and talked off. And another lady came up and said, You're one of his disciples. He said, No, I'm not either. I don't know that man. The third time one of them said, You are his disciples because you talk like one of those Galileans. You got a southern accent. And Peter, Peter cursed again in the cock crow, the rooster crow, and Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And Peter looked at Jesus, and suddenly Peter's heart sank, and he was broken, and he went out and he wept bitterly, bitterly, bitterly. Because in the hour of testing and temptation, he had failed the Lord. But the Lord had told him he would. But thank God the Lord said, But I have prayed for you. Yeah. Amen. Peter, you may fall, but I'm going to pray for you that you'll yeah. not quit. I'm going to pray for you that you'll not give up. I'm going to pray for you that you'll not get out, that you'll never turn back. I'm going to pray for you that you'll come through it. Yes. The Lord has prayed for you. The Lord, the Lord has prayed for me. Amen. I mean, there's victory in the Lord's prayer for you. There's victory Amen. in the Lord's prayer for me. Amen. Soon Peter would find himself on the day of Pentecost. Full of the Holy Ghost. Power of God's on him. Radiating from him. He's preaching. He's telling it like it is. 
that Jesus came, that Jesus was crucified, that he rose again, and faith in him will deliver your soul from death, hell, and the grave. Believe on him and trust him and, put, and, and, and receive Christ in your life. Be saved. Be saved today. Peter is preaching and 4,000 or 3,000 people get saved. Then we see Peter leading the church as he goes to jail time after time after time. And watching God ever deliver him time after time after time. Peter hangs around Jerusalem long enough to get thrown in jail about three or four times. You know that? Yeah. And then, the night before they were going to cut his head off, he's laying down there in the jailhouse sleeping. I don't know if I could do that or not. Do you? I mean, the next day they're going to cut off his head. And he's laying there chained between two men, I think it was. And the angel of the Lord came in there and just kicked him. He said, hey, so read it for yourself. The Bible said he smote him on the side. Got down there and the angel came in and just kicked him in the ribs. He woke up and the chains fell off. Peter started wandering through the hallways, finding door after door, just opening to him. Zoop, 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 like, like you thought all that door was a new thing. Zoop, 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 zoop. Gate after gate open to him. Finally got out on the street. And the last big gate to, from, to, to, to the jailhouse opened up. He stepped out on the street and the angel that was guiding him blessed him. And Peter said, <laughs> what just happened to me? <laughs> he thought he was having a dream. He found himself out on the street, and then he went to the house of his friend. And you know what Rhoda, Rhoda remember, said? He's down at the door knocking. He said, oh, no, he's in jail. He said, no, bro, he's down at the door knocking. And then Peter had a good sense to get out of Jerusalem after that. <laughs> hey, time, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is this. Time after time, God stood by Peter. And when the final hour of Peter's life came to stand by, and was called, he was called upon to stand by the Lord, he stood faithfully by the Lord. You see, they say Peter was crucified upside down. I don't know how that would be. I never have been crucified either way. I can describe for you the the, 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 the muscles screaming with pain, the nerves like a river of fire all through his body. I can describe for you the heavy breathing and the trouble he had inhaling and drawing the air in. He hung there upon that cross and the pressure of his weight pushed down on his lungs and push the very life breath out of him. I can tell you how that would be. But hanging upside down, I can just see his face. Well, Clyde knows what it's like to hang upside down too long. <laughs> you remember that? Clyde's face broke out in blood. All the blood rushed through him, went through his body to his head. Can you imagine that dying like that, like Peter did? They say that Peter himself refused to be crucified as the Lord was, being un feeling like he was unworthy to be crucified that way. I'm saying to you this morning, the Lord has prayed for you. He's prayed for you that when you're when you're sifted, when you're defeated, when you're struggling, when you're being abused by the devil, that your faith will not fail. If you don't even know Christ as your Savior, listen to me carefully. The devil won't leave you alone. And he still won't leave you alone. He'll, he'll, he'll make sure that you he'll, he'll try every, he will try if you're a lost person he will try to make you doubt and any little bit of faith or hope that you ever that you ever had the devil has tried to destroy that too Amen. keep you from coming to the Lord yeah. he'll get you hooked on drugs and alcohol any sorts of sin that he can find that you're, that you're weak and vulnerable to he'll tell you that there's no hope for you that God doesn't care for you he'll tell you that you're worthless that's the devil and if that doesn't work, he'll try to convince you that you don't need God, that you're just fine like you are. Don't you believe the devil? Don't you believe him this morning? You, you believe the word of God. Believe the Bible. Believe what Jesus said. What did Jesus say? He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He that believeth on me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. He that believeth in me, uh, and it shall never die. Don't believe the devil. Believe the Bible. Believe Amen. the Lord. You ever feel like you've been sifted as wheat? You ever feel like you're just going through one thing after another, after another, after another, and you're wondering to yourself and praying and quietly to God or complaining to God, God, what is going on? 
Why am I going through this? Have I not tried to serve you? Have I not been your have I not been a, a faithful? Have I not done the things the things I should do? And then why then am I being so so viciously attacked? And how does the devil attack? Well, sometimes it's through our children. Sometimes it's through our neighbors. Sometimes it's through our friends and other family members. But most of the time it's right in here. In the head. Right in your head. If you have ever had one severe fa failure in your life, the devil knows where he's got that made up to use against you. So if you've ever had any failure in your life at all, let me be let me assure you, very much let me very very much assure you that Jesus has prayed for you. So that you can be a victorious Christian on the other end. He will not let you down if you will just trust in him. Amen. Lean on, he, said, he said, don't be to your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. Don't be to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord. Amen. Just say, God, whatever you do, wherever you take me, that's where I'm going. The devil's not going to defeat me. I had told somebody, I told y'all a few last week, I think it was. The devil's he's for the last year nine months or so he's he's tormented me i fought the devil left and right for the last nine months and i've got to write this guy to get on back down to hell where he belongs i've told him that two or three times he says that's being arrogant preacher it sounds it sounds that way but it's not sometimes you got to talk blunt to the devil amen and then i'll say to him i'll say and all your little imps it bothers me so much you get on back down there too yeah now i'm going to go most of you are going to write me off saying he's crazy <laughs> You're crazy. I, I, I may be crazy, but I tell you what, truth. I'm being honest with you. My wife says I'm honest to, to a fault. I shouldn't be so honest. I'm honest with you today. I fought that booger. I fought him. I know he's real. And I tell you, he'll kill you or ruin your testimony in a heartbeat if he can. Amen. Praise be to God that he's never done that to me. And I hope, I pray that I hold my grave with, my, with a good name and a good reputation intact. Because I remember when I'm tested that Jesus has prayed for me. Amen. You remember that. He's prayed for you too. Let's bow our heads. We're done. Come on, lady. Bill, Timmy, Alan. I don't know what to say to you except if you need to come and pray, come and pray. If you need somebody to pray with you, come let me know. We'll get somebody to pray with you. You're not saved, and you need to be saved. You, know, if you, die, you don't know for sure that if you die today, you go to heaven. Why not come this morning and trust Christ as your Savior? You wondering about what to do with your life? Come up here and say, God, here I am. Take my life and use it for your glory. I'll be your servant. I'll follow you. I'll put you first. Whatever it might be. In Jesus' name, Lord. Finish the work we began in this invitation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand for you, we'll sing. Give you an opportunity to come and pray if you like. Come every soul, my
was talking about today, don't y'all? How many of you feel like you've been sifted? Amen. I, I do too. But, you know, God didn't leave us there, did he? Amen. We might be going through some more sifted, maybe. And that, uh, you know, remember all that stuff going on with Caitlin, still going on with Caitlin. It's tough when your baby says, I don't believe like you do, Daddy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's too late for me. I go, no, it's not. No, it's not. But God sent his son Jesus for me. Amen. And he prayed for me. Just like that my faith failed me not. Now it faltered, Pastor. You know it did. I was ready to give up my Sunday school class, my deaconship, my uh, Cindy, I was about ready to quit the choir. Because I thought God was throwing me away. Mm. But, but it, it was just me sick, being sifted. My faith being tested. But God sent me two Peters. And they're in this room today. You know how Peter strengthened his brethren? And I want to thank them today. First, Pastor Ray. He said, don't quit. Don't give up. This is just a trial. Yeah. And man sweat. Mm. The deacon that came to me said, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing it? He, go, he looked at his shoes after I told him. He knew my answer was not good enough. But first and foremost, I want to thank Jesus. Amen. Publicly. Mm -hmm. For being my Savior. Mm -hmm. And I didn't deserve him. And I don't think anybody here does. But I just want to thank him today. I have faith. I have hope. And I'm not going to be defeated. Amen. Amen. And Satan can go back where he came from. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Anybody else want to say something? I'm not going to cut that off unless it's of the Lord. All right. Well, we had uh, one or two. We had two bids on, on the refrigerator. I thought we'd get 50. And the highest bid went to Barry Williams. Barry, got to get out of here in a week. Got one week to get out of here. Pastor, I'd like to move it down to the adult Sunday school class. Well, you're welcome to do what you want to do with it. Just get it out of that over there. Yes, sir. And if you don't, we'll launch it off again next week. <laughs> <laughs> this preacher one time had a promotion at his church that he's going to give away a pony. For all, you know, for, his, for the people who brought the most visitors and stuff like that. And this kid won his pony. So he, could, he took it home to his daddy, brought it back, and said, This kid, I can't have no pony. We don't have a place to put this pony. So y'all, he gave it away the next week. Same thing, Daddy brought We don't have any place for a pony. He gave that same pony away about three times. That's what you, get, that's what you call get most, the most out of your can out of your pony, amen? <laughs> so we might get more out of this refrigerator if Barry can't get it down there. Uh, yeah, somebody, I'm sure, will help me, Barry. It won't be me. I got a bad back. <laughs> Let's stand our feet. We'll be this week.